Okay, for the fuel system itself, there's not so much that I can show you. Normally you'll have a fuel pump, you'll have some injectors or some means of delivering the fuel to the combustion space. But what you'll always see are fuel filters. That may be one of these here. I'm guessing it's the one on the left. Or actually it could be this one on the right because the fuel filter is normally smaller than the lubrication oil filter. But anyway, you'll see a filter. Sometimes it's quite small. It'll be on the underside of your car between the fuel tank and the engine itself. And if we go on the top of this engine, we may be able to see the fuel injectors. You can see there is a fuel injector here. And the fuel injector connects into our combustion space, which we saw a little bit earlier. Fuel may be diesel or petrol slash gasoline but there are also gas-fired engines as well. And theoretically, I suppose there's no reason why you couldn't use pulverized coal dust. I believe that's originally what internal combustion engines were fired on. For the fuel system itself, there's not so much I can show you using 3D models, but what I can tell you is that normally you'll have a fuel tank, a fuel pump, and a filter. Perhaps you'll sometimes have two filters, a primary and a secondary filter and you'll have a means of delivering the fuel to the combustion space, and that will be via an injector or by some other means, such as mixing the fuel in with the air. Sometimes injection of fuel into the combustion space will be done mechanically. You'll use a very similar setup to that which we saw earlier when you were opening and closing exhaust gas valves or air inlet valves, but you'll have something different that comes off the camshaft and that will be for opening and closing the fuel injectors. Many modern engines use a completely electronic control system to time when injection occurs in the engine. That's simply to increase the engine efficiency a little bit, although the downside here is that any problems you have with the electronic side of the engine will render the engine more or less inoperable because if you can't time the injection and control when the valves open and close, etc., the engine simply won't work. That's one of the big weaknesses of modern engines. They're so heavily reliant upon electrical systems. Personally, if I had the choice, I'd prefer a totally mechanical engine. They just run and run. They never stop. They're very, very reliable, but the downside is they are slightly less efficient than very modern high-tech engines. Let's load a 3D model up now so we can look at the air system.